All right. It is a rare, fairly warm um, day in Northeast California, and the snow's not flying yet, and we have this crazy opportunity to go check in on my favorite bald eagles up at Antelope Lake. So I'm going to cruise up to Antelope, and we're going to see if we can uh, catch a glimpse of these guys building on their nest and working on uh, laying eggs for the next year because it's that time of year they're preparing for the uh, the big winter to come. So crazy that there's no snow yet. The lake's going to be really low still from this last dry year. Um, I heard the fishing's pretty good so maybe we'll get into a fish or two and um, we will uh, guaranteed, I'm going to say it right up front, we're going to have a guaranteed bald eagle sighting today. So Let's get on it. So I saw a, a wildlife photographer being interviewed one time and, uh, I can't find the quote, but maybe somebody who sees this will know it and can help me find it. But it was a famous wildlife photographer and he basically said, he was being asked, like, how do you, how do you get your, your start, you know, or how do you get your sort of break in wildlife photography? And he said, uh, basically his answer was, you have to find a like backyard project that is some subject that you can return to like again and again and again that you can explore in all seasons that you can you can just beat to death basically for weeks and months and years and if you can do that and still like love it and you know get no recognition and no attention for it but if you can keep going back to that backyard project that is where you'll get your break right and i thought that was a cool statement and i didn't realize really until until much later but that's really what this place has been for me and the the bald eagles that live up here um have definitely been my my backyard project so it's a pretty amazing thing to work on a certain thing for so long and you know now i know where these guys live i know pretty much what they're going to be up to today and uh i can guarantee that i'm going to come up here and and find a bald eagle and take some pictures and uh that only comes with a whole bunch of time. Looks like I have the place to myself today. Pretty sweet. So this is my kayak. Um, camera lives up there in that little deck bag, which is actually waterproof fabric. Um, it's got a waterproof zipper, you know, that might help if you tipped over. And I used to zip it up all the time. I was really worried about it, but uh, I kind of have gotten over that. And I don't, I, it takes too long to get a hold of in the moment, you know, if you got, if you got too much to get out of the way. So trying to dodge these weed beds here with my lure back there. Fishing is actually supposed to be not very good today because the the moon phase is all wrong. The fish supposedly like the full moon a lot better than the new moon and we're pretty much at a new moon. But uh, sometimes they just eat when they're hungry so we're hoping for that. I've seen a couple jump already.
pretty peaceful up here. So this is my first time actually up here since the uh, Dixie fire. And I'm seeing, my friends have told me that one little patch over there in the sun that uh, where the fire actually burned down to the shoreline, which is amazing considering it swept all the way around kind of this place. But I was worried about the eagle nests up here until I heard that it only actually came to the shoreline in that one, that one spot, um, which is not where the nests are. So that's a good thing. All those birds in front of me are called coots. A lot of people call them mud hens, but they, uh, they're like a favorite winter meal for bald eagles that come up here in winter. They got these big old giant feet. And they make a cool sound when they rip across the water like that. My, uh, my little fish finder's telling me water temperature is 42 degrees, almost 43. The air temp was down in the 20s on the drive. I think it's right about freezing right now. All right, I see one of my guys. One of my guys up in that tree. I'm gonna reel this in. So I don't know if you guys can see, but uh, let me hold the camera here. Right up in the top of that tree Shows a way to really show you guys through the lens here, but I don't think that's gonna work too well. Wouldn't that be cool? Where am I? There you go. All right, we'll let that guy fish. We got a fish on, people. It's kind of fun. I was just about to think about getting out my lead core line because uh, my fish finder's showing I'm kind of deep. But not this guy. Pretty little rainbow trout right there the hook out of them another man we're not going to get across the lake if uh the fish keep biting like this so let's see what we got here pretty good rainbow trout well no uh no beautiful release video there man he took a dive when i uh got the hook out of him he was gone. So I've had a couple of people call me out on, on Facebook for fishing and how, how mean it is. And they're like, you know, if you're not going to keep the fish anyway, why would you put them through that? You know, why would you catch them? Cause it hurts. And I'm like, you know, I'd love to be able to reason with you there, but it's clearly there's no point. If you don't get it, you don't get it, you know? Sorry. Fishing is one of the greatest things on earth. Well, you guys are not gonna believe this, but I'm pretty sure that I see a bald eagle. Oh, there he goes. You know, you see him flying. Don't you worry, I'm pretty sure I know where he's going. So I just pulled up to shore. And uh, that's how cold it is.
last night's growth. So I don't want to like advertise where I'm at on the lake, but the nest is up in front of me here. Let me get you where you can see I'm there, right? And I'm seeing no birds up there at the moment. But if nobody's up there, that means they have not laid eggs yet, which I kind of expected. It's kind of that time of year, but I feel like these guys are a little a little later than what you what you read. Another. There you go, the Antelope Lake Rainbow. There's a great blue heron flying over there. I felt like a little bit bigger fish that time. He's just a fighter, man. There you go. Pretty fish. Watch him take off. Be out of here. Woo! They got cool red eyeballs. Underrated, underrated birds. They're pretty cool. Well, the whole moon phase thing doesn't seem to be panning out. There he is. Another good rainbow. We got another fish. So that's something. Fish number five. We'll just let him jump. Whoop, 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 whoop. Easy, buddy. Bye. This is kind of a better angle. It's tiny on the GoPro, but I'll take a picture of it for you. Pretty massive. This is, um, I'm right under the nest tree. I was like looking around, seeing if you can find like bits of food and stuff. But you are, you are in the splash zone down here. This whole tree's like surrounded by eagle poo. This is a very cool thing. The, uh, the bald eagle tail feather and I think it's I think it's a bummer that like under the whatever they are protected species endangered species national symbol act thing unless you're a Native American it's technically illegal for me to possess this and take this home right which I get the intent, but I would I would argue that this would mean a whole lot more to me than it would to a lot of other people, you know? It's a shame that I can't, like, have these under the law. This could very well be a tail feather that was in the photo that I got that that won the uh, California Wildlife Photo of the Year a couple years ago, right? This could be a star feather. Would look very cool on the frame with that picture, but alas, I am not 1 16th native. So there it sits.
I think it's fair to say that they like perching in these two dead snags right here. There we go. Fish number, man, six. I've lost track. This is my biggest one, I think. Oh, look at that dude. Woo. Boy, howdy. He's a chunk, man. He's gonna, he's gonna bail. 16 and a half inches, maybe. Yeah, if he was stretched out. Good stuff. Woo. Guess what happened? We got another one. Another fine specimen of a rainbow trout. Get you back in, bub. There you go. Man, what a rough day at the lake, huh? Well, I just spotted a bald eagle in a tree over there. And I, I hope he hangs out because we just hit another fish right when I was about to reel in and go paddle over toward that eagle. Pretty rainbow trout. Go get him, buddy. just want him to think I'm cruising on by, paying him no mind, even though he knows exactly what I'm doing. That's what we came for. Quite a bit of glare there, but that'll be cool. This is the part where my shoulders start cramping. It's always worth the wait though. Lots of times they'll give you like a, a second before they take off. It'll uh, kind of stiffen up or they'll poop and get ready to kind of jump. But I've missed a lot of them by taking a break when my shoulders got tired. Funny, this lens is heavy though. After a while. I may outlast my GoPro battery here. It was, it was getting pretty low. All right, so I did uh, outlast my GoPro battery there. Um, that eagle sat there for another 20, 25, and I had to get going. I got, <laughs> I got stuff to do, so I left him. He's still over there somewhere. Um, I wasn't far from the where I parked, so caught one more fish on the way over here, which was what number nine, I think. So. All in all, pretty epic day on Antelope Lake and uh, 
very cool to be able to check on those birds before the snow flies. So hopefully they get a whole bunch of snow really soon, but uh, kind of a fun December treat to come up here. I've never been up here this late, so cool deal. Till next time.